So, um, published, how do you, how do you, uh, what are the steps? Okay. Uh, how, how, well, do, how, do, how does a playwright get published? Sure. Uh, well, first step, I, I would recommend any playwright or any writer of any kind, uh, specifically plays, if you want to get published, have it produced first. Uh, my first ever play that was published, um, I realized it was published and we then had a production shortly after and I was not happy with everything, but it was already published. So it was kind of like already in print. The publisher wasn't really going to do a reprint, you know, wasn't a, a well-known enough play for them to, you know, do the expense of reprinting. And so that one kind of got stuck as a published piece without being fully finalized. So I, I really recommend you don't publish until you feel the script is absolutely ready. So that's first thing. Uh, so make sure it's produced, make sure you are completely satisfied with it uh, before you try to get it published. Once you are satisfied, you want to get it published. I, again, approach it the same way. I try to reach out to multiple publishers. For one thing, you know, you're probably going to get turned down by a few not necessarily a reflection of the quality of the piece. I've had uh, rejections because we have a, another book in the catalog that's too similar to your play. You know, uh, so it's just a sort of thing where it's it's not uh, necessarily a statement on how good the piece is, more along the lines of what do they want to represent in their catalog. And so I submit to multiple places. And then also on a few occasions, I've had uh, multiple publishers want the piece. And then I can kind of create a bidding war. I can go, well, this place is offering you know, this much royalties, this place is offering this, and uh, they can kind of come back and forth and see who wants it more. Um, so that's always nice to, to do that. So I, I do apply to multiple publishers at once. And the majority of publishers say that that's fine. Uh, one or two publishers will say, if you're submitting to us, please don't submit to anywhere else and, and while we're considering it. Uh, and so that's something to factor in. But, but if they don't have that stipulation, then I submit to multiple places. Um. Can you can you do you mind talking about the royalties? What what yeah. the differences that you've that you've gotten, if you don't mind, just just so you know, sure. beginners out there might might be able to you know gauge yeah. or they have expectations. Absolutely, the the majority of publishers um, will pay you very little for the when you sell a printed copy of the book because the majority of that cost is on them. They they're printing it, they're publishing it, and all that stuff. Uh, but they will pay you a lot higher royalties when it comes to the uh, production of the play. So if somebody buys a copy, I may get 15 cents on the dollar for, you know, what, whatever that is. Uh, but if they produce the play, I usually get anywhere from um, some of the publishers, 50 to 75 percent of the royalty is from the production. And that varies depending on whether it's a 10 minute piece or a 30 minute piece or, a, you know, two act play or, or so on. Um, so different publishers will charge different rates based on that. So. So the publishers actually get a cut of your royalties. Oh, yeah, absolutely. That, that's what that keeps them in business. They wouldn't do it otherwise. Right. Um, okay. The upside, depending on the publisher, is they can market it you know, around the world. I've had plays done in, in Egypt and Africa and all sorts of places because the publisher had reach in those places. So having a publisher actually you know, is great for marketing purposes, is great for, um, you know, good all of their customers will look at, you know, well, we've liked their other plays. Let's look at what, what else they've selected. Uh, so, for example, I have one publisher that's Pioneer Drama. They're very elite. They deal with children's plays. Um, if you can get in, you know, they've rejected the majority, like 99% of my work they've rejected, but they accepted one of my plays. And uh, their royalty rate is it's on the lower end as far as what cut I get. But the amount of productions I've gotten out of it has been amazing. So really? I've had a ton of productions from this one publication. And because of that, it, it works out well in the end. So, um, you know, so even though their percentage is lower, the percentage of the royalty specifically I get. So I, I think I get 50 percent on the dollar. But I get so many productions that it's like it's totally worth it. So when you submit, I mean, or how do you approach how do you approach your publishers that, that you go to, that you submit to? Do you, okay. I mean, especially now, because you've been doing this for 20 years and sorry sure. to interrupt, but I'm sure things have changed. So oh, I, yeah. I don't, I'm sure back in the day, you maybe you were mailing it, you know, mailing it in. <laughs> you bet. Yeah. And, yes. and so now I'm, technology's changed so much. So. Oh yeah. 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 Technology has changed, which is, is to the good and the bad. Uh, on the one hand, it's really easy to submit a script now. On the other hand, that means a lot more competition because right. it's so easy to submit a script that, anybody can submit a script even if they 
you know, haven't vetted the script, even if it's not very well done, even if it's not been produced much. Um, so I'm up against, you know, thousands of other writers that have submitted their script as well, because it's so easy to just click a button. Um, so hopefully my work rises to the top, you know, that's, there is a competitive edge, you know, theater, you always think of as, as a collaborative art form and it really is, but there's also, unfortunately, this competitiveness that, that comes in. Uh, and sometimes it can feel a little cutthroat. Uh, but basically I, I look at, at submitting a, a play for the publisher the same way I do for a, a production. I send it out there. I hope they like it. Um, Again, I try to send it to multiple places so that if I do get rejected, at least there's other options uh, out there uh, for me. And then um, I make sure to look at their guidelines. All the publishers have very specific guidelines like Pioneer. They gear towards children. So if I have a script, you know, where, you know, the language is maybe a bit more adult or the content is a bit more adult, I, I wouldn't even bother sending it to them because I know that's not going to be their, their thing. Uh, whereas there's other publishers, that's their focus is more cutting edge, avant-garde, adult themed stuff. Uh, I wouldn't send them my kids plays because I know it's not going to go well there. Um, so these are, these are blind submissions that you're doing, or do you always just wait and see if they're, they're accepting? Depends. Um, once I'm with a publisher, a lot of times they accept, pub, you know, they'll accept my work anytime because I've already have a play with them. And when I say accept, they'll accept a submission. That right. doesn't mean they'll they'll publish the piece. It just means they'll they'll read it uh, because I'm already in their catalogs. So they'll go, okay, we'll we'll take a look at your next work. They either say yay or nay, uh, depending on you know situation. Uh, so um, as far as uh, you know, do I do I do in blind submissions? It depends. If I'm not familiar with the place, if it's a new place, then I, then they probably will ask for blind submissions. Uh, and what that means, if any of your listeners are not aware, um, I'll send an email with my name and contact information, but the attachment with the script has no personal information in it whatsoever. So when the person who receives the email, they know my name, but when they send it out to their readers, uh, presumably they would send it with no contact information and the readers would read it blind. So there's no favoritism. Right. And and, that, and that's my apologies again uh, for that, because what I really should have asked is, uh, is unsolicited uh, submissions oh, rather, um, than, rather than blind submissions. Because, again, in this industry, two totally different things. Yeah. Right, right, right. Unsolicited. Uh, I would always, uh, always check with the theater. Many theaters will accept an unsolicited letter or an unsolicited maybe a sample of your writing. Uh, they'll say, you know, uh, if you're, you know, some theaters will say, please don't send us anything. We're not looking for any scripts right now, right. which, you know, I respect that. Um, but if they say, you know, we'll, we'll accept uh, unsolicited uh, sample of your work, never send them the full script. You send them maybe five to ten pages of the script, as well as a cover letter explaining who you are. Would you consider reading my work? I've sent those out. Um, it depends on the theater. If I really want to work with that theater, I'll, I'll send them an unsolicited um, request. So it, it just means, you know would you like to look at my work? I don't send the work. I ask them, you know, would you consider it? Very rarely do I hear back if it's unsolicited because that, you know, there's a reason they're not asking right now because they're probably too busy. Um, but, you know, on, on occasion I've heard back and they say, yeah, sure, we'll, we'll take a look at it. We'll read it. In which case, you know, I'll send it. Uh, but solicited, most theaters will say, we are currently seeking plays right now and they'll tell you the guidelines. Where do you look for your opportunities? All right. I'm on a couple of different sites. Uh, there's the Playwrights Binge, which is a uh, listserv. Uh, different playwrights can can share. They say, hey, I heard about this great opportunity. Here, check this out. And, you know, and I'll share. Here's one I found, um, you know, and different people. Uh, there's a, a great writer named Oren Squire who has a, uh, a list called uh, Six Perfections uh, that he shares different opportunities. There's NYC Playwrights. There's the New Play Exchange. Uh, so, uh, oh, there's also the official face, uh, the official playwrights of Facebook and all these places have different opportunities and most of them are run by playwrights and they share um, different uh, opportunities that come up that, they, that we hear about. Welcome to our Clips channel and thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed that video. If you did, be sure to smash that like button down below and leave a comment while you're at it. If you want to be notified about future episodes, be sure to visit our channel right here and click the subscribe button. If you want to see the full conversation of this episode, you can click the link right here. And if you want to see past episodes featuring playwriting tips, you can follow this link right here. And until we see each other again, and in the meantime, keep writing.